I had an instance this week where a friend of mine was looking at some analytics reporting and asked me to kind of decipher, I guess for lack of a better word, exactly what was happening. And I, I told them there was a few things happening. Right now, the market is pretty crazy as far as everybody's in a wait and see kind of mode. And I've said this before, I mean, I'll, I'll say it again. There's nobody who got a car loan for 0% or damn close to it three, four, four and a half years ago who's going to trade it in for an 8 to 10%. Even a 4% was going to be a stretch. I mean, unless you absolutely need a car, like, God forbid, you got into a car wreck or your car was stolen or something and your car is total and you have to get it, have to get a new car because of it. I mean, that's really legit, like, the only reason someone's going to buy a car right now. Um, I, unless, you know, some people just don't care and they have money to burn. That's, you know, no judgment, that's fine. But for John Q. Public, the average middle class American, it's just not happening. So when I'm reading this report and talking to her, I'm also looking at her website and noticing, you know, the, the, the tier one interest rate was uh, a 0% for 36 months. And then, you know, of course from there it was, it, it scaled up. Well, seeing as how over the last, I don't know, 10 years, um, uh, automotive finance companies have extended out the terms of contracts, uh, finance contracts. It used to be, you know, four years, five years, a 60 month contract was pretty much the standard when I sold cars. And now, you know, 72 months was just picking up steam. And now the standard is, you know, 84 to 96 months on a car loan. So not only have we gotten into a trick bag where we've extended the trade cycle because people aren't going to be in an equitable position, equitable position uh, as much at three and four years like they were. They're going to be in a more equitable position at the five-year mark five and six year mark, uh, depending on the, the length of the loan. So if people aren't in an equitable, pos equitable position till further out from their purchase and A, and then B, people are not going to trade in for eight times the interest rate. And then C, we've got a strike going on. Uh, well, actually that we have a tentative deal on the strike from what I understand this morning. Um, nothing's been signed, sealed, delivered as far as the news is reported yet, but we'll see. Um, so we've got like a perfect storm where market interest just isn't there. It, it just flat out isn't there. So, you know, paid vendors, paid marketing companies, they're really going to have to be patient with their dealers because some dealers are going to have no choice but to pause spend. There, there's going to be no choice. They have no choice. And it'd be better if you paused spend for a dealership or, or they're just going to cancel the whole thing. I mean, you have to really play a long game strategy there. And so what I told my friend is, okay, we can't generate market interest through any of your paid marketing sources. Um, your organic stuff is actually performing still pretty well. And to be honest, the impression share wasn't bad. It, it, it had definitely dropped significantly, but it wasn't bad overall. So what I told her with is I would stick with your game plan in the current status. If you have to cut budget, here's where I would cut it from. And we determined um, a few models in inventory that they have higher volume of and they're expected to continue to have higher volume of. And that's what she focused her spend on. Um, and then cut out the rest of the inventory as far as her paid spend. And then with regards to, uh, and, that, and that was pretty much, you know, across the board with all of her paid uh, uh, funnels that she was actually advertising in. So I, I don't know that I would recommend cutting out paid completely. I don't think that's the right play, honestly, because it takes too long to, to build up once you get it started again. But if you can cut back to one or two models that you know you have double digits of and that you have um, you know backup coming in 
that's where I would kind of focus my strategies. And the ones that have the best customer facing incentives also would be uh, part of that pool of how to make those decisions on which ones to continue to advertise, which ones that are the most appealing to the customer. Um, is going to be hard decisions that we all have to make in order to, to keep the lights on and keep the roof over our head. And what I would also do is actually really go in, like, like we do equity mining for our sales teams to get people to buy, you know, that bought a car from us before to get, get them to buy another car. I really, really would strongly encourage anyone who's got a BDC, either off offsite or in person, to really dig in and start sending uh, service offers to your previous customers. Because if you know that that customer has an F-250 and the new rate on the F-250 is 10.5% and you know that guy has a 0% interest rate on his F-250, even though he's at the five year mark, I don't know that I would hit him up with come buy a new F-250 for 10% interest. I don't think that's gonna appeal to anybody. But what would appeal to him because he's gonna keep that F-250 longer is how about 20% off or 15% off or 10% off your next service with us. Uh, click here to book your appointment, take him right to the appointment page and go from there. That's kind of how I would play that is I would get a lot more granular instead of the spray and pray with our email blast that we send everybody, hey, we're having all these service specials. Take a little bit more time. And again, this goes back to my theory of playing the long game with your customer database. Instead of trying to continue to hit them, trade in, trade in, trade in, because I, I think that's hit a wall now. Um, we're trading in a vehicle every 18 months isn't, you know, that's not gonna happen like it was before. So really hitting in knowing that, hey, that's that guy has a, a, a 2019 Jeep Grand Cherokee I know if he's put 15,000 miles a year on it, he's at a, you know, 45, what is that? What year is it? <laughs> so he's at a four year, whatever, four year, 45, so 60,000 mile service. Sorry, it's early in the morning and my brain's not exactly firing. <laughs> um, 60,000 mile service, send him a deal on a 60,000 mile service. So it takes a little bit extra time, I know, and I know you have a huge database, but I'm telling you right now, the long-term payoffs are gonna be huge because if you keep sending the value at the things that are important to that customer of the thing, keeping their truck running, that they're gonna have to keep running because they can't, you know, they can't afford to up their interest rate eight times from what they have now, that's gonna be really important and that's gonna be something that's gonna lead them to making the purchase decisions when they are back in the market. You know, when that truck hits 10 years and they decide, all right, I'm gonna give this to my kid and I'm gonna get a new one or, you know, whatever the decision may be, that's when you really have to, you really have to play that long game strategy. So to recap, don't read too much into as far as your impression share and all that, the analytics reporting because you're going to be down because you can't generate market interest but what you can't so so don't make any quick vast you know uh, drastic decisions because the whole market is down across the nation but what I would do is actually be more strategic with your spend focus on some models that have better incentives better programs better rebates to the in the customer facing advertising for tier one and then push that to your tier three. And then the next part of that is I would actually utilize your customer database and your customer mailing list uh, for your service department and get really granular with the emails you send. So figure out if they've had the car three years, they're at 45,000 miles, give them a discount on a, a 45,000 mile service or you know so on and so forth. Take the extra time to do that because the long-term payoffs will be there. Thanks for watching, happy selling.